vacations at Cigna, and he had a change of heart. He came to learn and, and think more deeply about what that company does, and he couldn't live with it anymore. And he's been coming out and telling us how that company operates, how the other health insurance company operates, and what's wrong with that business, and why we need change now. Please welcome Wendell Potter. I really appreciate you coming out today, and uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to... I'd like to first of all begin by apologizing, uh, apologizing for the role that I played in cheating you guys out of a reformed healthcare system 15 or 16 years ago, and for the role that I played over the course of the 1990s and earlier this year, earlier this decade, in uh, supporting the interest of the insurance industry and not your interest. Uh, I unfortunately played a role in the defeat of the Clinton health care plan. Uh, I played a role in the defeat of the Patients Bill of Rights that uh, you all should have had, but the insurance industry won. So please accept my apology, because if, if, uh, if it hadn't been for my good work and the success of the insurance industry in years past, we wouldn't be here today. So, uh, but thank you very much for keeping the faith and for uh, never giving up. Uh, I'm just someone who's been... I'm someone who's a, a fairly new advocate for, for health care reform. Beginning when I gave my Senate testimony on June the 24th, you guys have been in the trenches for a lot longer than that. So my hat is off to you, and I thank you very much for all that you've done and for the support that you've given me and your, the encouragement that you've given me. I want to say, though, that I am... I am very encouraged, not just because of seeing you guys here today, but I've seen similar groups all across the country as I've been going from one rally to another. I've spoken at town halls. I've, I've seen the teabaggers, but I want to tell you something. The people who are for health care reform, who are, who are for the public op option, well outnumber the people who are trying to defeat reform. I want you to know that. And I want you to stay encouraged because, folks, the next few weeks are going to be some of the most important weeks in the history of this country because we really are on the verge of doing something that has not been done before, that hasn't been achieved before, and that is really passing or having Congress pass some very meaningful health care reform that will be in your best interest and not the interest of the insurance industry and the other special interests. We can do this. Uh, Max Balker, Balkus notwithstanding. The, the bill for Max Balkus certainly was something that uh, I think the health insurance industry was just surprised at how good it was for them. And I read today that uh, he's, he's making some concessions. He's saying now that he will agree to greater subsidies for those who can't afford to buy health insurance from big insurance companies. He's now saying that he might even in entertain the idea of a trigger to establish a public option. Folks, that ain't good enough. You know, uh, he said he was considering those options. What I would think he might want, what we might want to consider is the real Democrats uh, holding an intervention for Mac Max Baucus and say, look, Max, here's what the country needs. Get with the program. The, uh, and I know, too, from meeting with a lot of members of Congress, both on the House side and the Senate side, that there is real deep and sincere support for the public option. There really is support for doing the right thing this time. And I want you to know that. And I'm talking about people who, who we would call blue dog Democrats. They're not, they have not all been bought off by the, by the insurance industry. Uh, there are strong defenders of public option and health care reform in the Senate. Uh, just beginning with, just to mention one person by, by, in particular, uh, Nelson, I mean, uh, Jay Rockefeller. Also, Tom Harkin, who's now the chairman, who succeeded uh, Ted Kennedy, who's is the new chairman of the uh, Senate Health Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. So there is real strong res support on both in both houses of Congress for real reform. So I want you to know that. And I want you to go forward and to convince those of your neighbors, your relatives who might say, well, we can't afford reform. Make them understand that we can't afford not to have reform. This is an investment that we have to make in this country. It's an investment we have to make in each other. Tell them that they 
may be worried about having a, a, a government bureaucrat between them and their insurance, them and their doctors, tell them that what they have now is even worse. There's not going to be a government bureaucrat between them and their doctors. What they have now, very likely, is a, a corporate bureaucrat like I used to be between them and their doctors. What we have now is not a government-run health care system. That's not what we need to be afraid of. What we need to be afraid of is the reality of Wall Street-run health care. That is the reality. That is what is scary that any fear-mongering that they, could, they can come up with. So folks, again, keep the faith. Thank you very much for all you're doing. Uh, tell your friends and neighbors that this is really important. It's for them, it's for their children, and for the grandchildren that we really have to have health care reform. Pick up the phone. Call your members of Congress. Write letters. They need to hear from you. They need to know, need to know that you are firmly behind them, and they expect to, you expect them to do the right thing. Thank you very much.